This video content has not been reviewed nor has it been approved by the American Chestnut Foundation or by the American Chestnut Research and Restoration Project. All of the viewpoints are my own. I believe they're accurate, but please verify everything on your own. Thank you. Hope you enjoy the video. Hey everybody, it's John back with Lake Erie Chestnuts here with another video explaining why I don't grow American chestnuts. And I thought I'd give you a little update on that. Right now I have a chestnut orchard. It's finished its 10th year of growing. We have 29 different varieties growing currently in our chestnut orchard covering about 10 acres. And we got about 450 trees. None of those are pure American chestnut. The reason why is the blight. Cryphonectria parasitica, the blight, causes cankers or sores in the side of the bark of American chestnuts and ultimately kills them, girdles the tree, effectively girdles that tree. And universally, it kills the American chestnut. Although there have been individual trees that seem to have a little bit of something, they all will die. And if you're out west on the other side of the Rockies, you may see American chestnuts growing well because blight, for whatever reason, has not made its way there or it doesn't do as well there, but it lives in oak trees, beech trees. And if you plant a chestnut tree, even if a chestnut tree has not been there for a long time, it will die. So I thought I'd give you a little update because there's recently been a lot of news on a chestnut tree that had a lot of press recently. It was a transgenic tree, GMO if you wanna use that word, genetically modified. It was known as the Darling 58 tree, and the research on that was being conducted by State Universities of New York, and they have been going through the process of seeing, does this tree work? Can it successfully reforest the Eastern US with the American chestnut? Is it safe? So a lot of chatter about GMO and so forth. Uh, there are plenty of other plants that are GMO, and whether they hurt people or harm people, it's hard to say. The bottom line is, they inserted a gene from the wheat plant, and they use that gene because wheat and other grasses have this gene and billions of people consume it every day. So they feel like, well, if other people are consuming that gene, it, it clearly that gene by itself is safe. Is it safe in this tree? And they did a process to edit the chromosomes of the American chestnut and they got that wheat gene inserted. Well, what does that gene do? Well, the gene is only a tiny little piece of data compared to the American Chestnut Foundation, which is working on backcrossing Americans to Chinese chestnuts and backcrossing, backcrossing, and hopefully with the goal of a 15 16th American chestnut with 1 16th Chinese with the blight resistance in there. But that changes a lot of the genetic code. Uh, 1 16th is a huge amount of genetic changing compared to inserting a tiny gene edit. What that gene does is it encodes for an enzyme called oxalate oxidase. And oxalic acid is felt to be the, one of the key things expressed by the fungus, the Cryphonectria parasitica, that it expresses oxalic acid, which seems to cause be one of the major causes of the canker spreading and getting through the cambium layer and ultimately causing plant death. They did that because initially on, early on, when they measured hypovirulent strains where cankers were there, didn't expand and were ultimately healed over by the tree, had much lower amounts of the oxalic acid. So when, if there's high oxalic acid, is that the thing that's causing the tree death? If we can neutralize the oxalic acid with oxalate oxidase, which the wheat gene has, you might have a tree that can be very resistant to blight. And the initial studies were very, very positive out of this. And it went, was going through the regulatory process with USDA approval. There were some regulated plantings in various states. Indiana, New York, and uh, I believe Virginia, they planted those trees. Well, the news came out in uh, early December of this of 2023 that the American Chestnut Foundation, which has kind of been running with the 15, 16, 1 16 type back crossing tree, withdrew their support of the SUNY genetically modified tree. So why did that happen? So I'll use notes here because we're kind of in the technical phase of this. They withdrew their support from the transgenic tree because as I said, the oxalate oxidase, we're just going to say OXO just for ease of process. That's the enzyme breaking up the oxalic acid that is thought to cause the bad cankers and death. 
So the OXO is from the wheat gene inserted into the pure American chestnut, has no Chinese genetics. That tree should do great in the woods. It should grow fast, it should grow tall, it should be like a pure American chestnut. So OXO detoxifies oxalic acid. So it's kind of like you don't take the gun away from the criminal, but you take away the bullets. Well, it's no good. Uh, so you take away the bullets, the oxalic acid from the fungus, the fungus can be there, but it can't kill the tree. So that's the purpose of the OXO going into the tree. But the American Chestnut Foundation said, first of all, that blight resistance of D58, the Darling 58 tree with the OXO in it, was highly variable. They did an Indiana chapter planting in 2019 it was a USDA permitted planting. Initially in this planting, the cankers of the OXO positive trees, the genetically modified trees, was great. However, after a couple years, the, even the OXO positive trees developed large cankers and ultimately fatal, very severe cankers from the blight and were dying. That led researchers to say, why is this? This is a tree that is able to express oxalate oxidase the neutralizer to the acid and still trees are dying so there must be something more about the blight and how it kills than just the oxalate ox oxidase that they don't know that's just the theory they've been running with number two they said the growth and survival results uh, had penalties severe penalties to the oxo positive progeny the trees that were oxo positive that inherited the D58 genetics showed significantly reduced growth and significantly reduced survival than those trees that were OXO negative. They said they were 15 to 25% shorter at two years and three years. So that's pretty significant. If a tree's four foot, let's say one's three foot and one's four foot, that's a foot of difference. That's gonna be hard to compete against the canopy if you have a tree that can't grow as fast. You know, they are gonna to have to compete against other trees, maples, oaks, beeches, everything that's out there growing as fast as it can. And now you have a tree that seems to have some growth retardation. Now within different families of the same tree, you can have just like humans, tall and short people. Also survival was significantly reduced in OXO positive trees. Five of 24 trees planted survived at, I believe three years, five of 24, that is low. If they were OXO negative, 19 of 24 survived. So there must be something that the OXO gene that is inserted there is affecting their survival. Something is going on there. If it was homozygous for OXO positive, meaning both of getting both of the OXO gene, it seemed to be more lethal. So that is a huge concern to them. So for that reason, the American Chestnut Foundation withdrew their support of the American Chestnut research project out of SUNY. For their part, they have said that the research continues. They've listed uh, several issues that happened. One is somehow or another, the Darling 58 tree was mixed up with a Darling 54, which has the gene, but it's in a different spot on the chromosome and maybe even on a different chromosome. It's, it's, it's a little in the details there, whether it's on chromosome four or not. In any event, somewhere when the trees were being handed off or something with the labeling, something happened. The, the Darling 58 tree that they've been researching may have been the Darling 54. So that's very concerning, that's problematic. If you're doing research and you think you're researching one thing, but it's another thing, now you gotta go back and find out how much of it was about that tree or not. So a lot of confusion there, but they continue to research and their heart is in the right place. They want to bring the American chestnut back and I want one too. So far, steadfast in my uh, refusing to grow the American chestnut by itself for the fact that it's just going to die seven years later. Maybe you can change my mind. Maybe I'll grow some for some pollen and get some crosses. I do have American hybrids, including Dunstan's and a few others that have some American genetics, but nothing that is dominantly American. Recapping this kind of techie presentation today I wanted to bring you up to date that if you've been holding out for the genetically modified tree it has been delayed for sure by this most recent revelation that the trees may not be doing as well that the tree they thought they were researching was not the exact tree that they were researching now they kind of get got to go backwards and figure out is darling 58 
the one they've been doing the research on the whole time or where that separation happened where it became the darling 54 and find out does the 58 truly have those benefits they've proven safety uh, many things that you know gypsy moss eating on it many other things uh, you know honeybees using it it hasn't seemed to affect those creatures in any way grass is growing in the orchard they've done lots of research in combination with the usda and through all of that they've had safety but do they have a tree yet that is going to reforest the eastern u.s forest with american chestnuts and restore them to their previous glory they're not there yet but this is but in no way attempting to knock on SUNY. they're doing everything they can and that's research is messy sometimes and you try to keep it the best you can but they you know they've ran into a hiccup and for that reason the american chestnut foundation withdrew their support anyway i wanted to bring you that that's why i don't have an american chestnut growing yet i just can't stand to see beautiful trees die six or seven years later how about you are you guys growing american chestnuts yet what kind of varieties are you growing right here to my left i've got some chestnuts sitting in the fridge how about you do you have chestnuts growing in your fridge in a couple months we'll be putting them in some dirt putting them right behind here and getting them growing inside and then growing some outside too can't wait for that stay tuned for great content about chestnuts food plots what our new year's plans are for the farm deer hunting turkey hunting's coming up and we're starting to log some land down in south carolina i'll try to bring you some footage of that and let you know the process that we went through and it's my first time logging there's a lot of fear actually in my heart so stay tuned we got lots of great content we appreciate every thumbs up that's all it costs you is a thumbs up. If you give me a subscribe, I'll give you a bonus or not. We'll let you watch the next video for free. Thanks for every single view that you guys give. Share it with your friends. Plant some chestnuts. Remember, if you're not out there growing, guys and gals, you're dying. Thanks for watching us here at Lake Erie Chestnuts.